Foreign exchange fraud is any trading scheme used to defraud traders by convincing them that they can expect to gain a high profit by trading in the foreign exchange market. Over the years, the Nigerian forex market has acquired a pervasive influence on consumption and production in our economy. Sometimes forex are used for purposes other than that which they are applied for. Experts claim that the Malay is currently endemic and is responsible for major adverse economic indicators such as the non-growth of the real sector. Today on The Eagle, our topic of discussion is Foreign Exchange Malpractices, a Call for Sanity. Hello and thank you for joining us on another episode of The Eagle. My name is Aisha Mohammed. I am Abdurashid Bawa. I stand against corruption. I call on every patriotic Nigerian to lend their voices in this crusade. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Together we will make Nigeria great. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, Abdurashid Bawa, has sought greater collaboration and partnership with the Association of Chief Compliance Officers of Banks in Nigeria, ACCOBIN, as well as Buru the Change Operators BDC, as a way of tackling foreign exchange malpractices, money laundering, and other fraudulent activities in the nation's financial sector. Bawa made the appeal during a meeting with critical stakeholders in the financial service sector at the Lagos Command of the Commission on the heels of the recent announcement by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to redesign and reissue some NERA notes. He called for prompt disclosure of fraudulent activities through the exchange of relevant information about illicit depositors and movement of money through deposit money banks. Abbas Abakar Umar tells us more. The EFCC chairman, Abdurashid Ba, said that in view of the recent move by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to redesign and reissue her denominations of the Nigerian currency, the Naira, there is a need for the EFCC to be proactive and be cautious of the actions of the criminals who will use the financial institutions to launder illicit funds and commit other nefarious activities. He said it is important for the Association of Chief Compliance Officers of Banks in Nigeria, ACOBIN, as well as Bureau de Change, BDC, to understand what the policy is all about, considering the fact that a lot of activities will happen with the approach of the 2023 general elections. This, he says, makes it imperative to work with the two bodies for more information on how to deal with the issues. Bauer stressed that the EFCC believes that the financial institutions have an important role to play in reading Nigeria of financial and economic crimes and charged the bank's compliance officers and BDC operators to, to be wary of activities of criminals who might want to use the financial institutions to hold monies for the purpose of vote buying. He emphasized the need for financial institutions to take more seriously the issue of Know Your Customers, KYC, and improve intelligence sharing with the Commission. According to him, to forestall cybercrime, the issue of KYC must go beyond citing utility bills and receipts of customers. The EFCC boss also called on banks to continually develop vetting mechanisms with a view to addressing insider abuse by staff. In his remarks, Chairman of Akobin Boye Ogulade expresses satisfaction over the engagement, adding that the meeting is a good initiative which he hopes will be regular. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdurashid Bawa, has called on the media to be familiar with the new Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Act 2022 so as not to run foul of its provision. He also emphasized the need for the media to continuously educate the citizens on the new Money Laundering Act. Bauer gave the charge in Lagos while declaring open a one-day workshop 
on financial crimes reporting organized by the EFCC for financial journalists. Again, Abbas Abubakar Omar has the details. Speaking through the Lagos Zonal Commander of EFCC Ahmad Ghali, Bawa said there are certain provisions of the new law that is believed to affect media practitioners directly or indirectly. One of such is secrecy of financial institutions. He stated that the new law criminalizes the operation of numbered accounts and also mandates financial institutions to ascertain the beneficial owners of accounts before opening such accounts. The EFCC chairman stressed that there is a more robust requirement for due diligence and reporting obligation by financial institutions and non-financial business and professions to the Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering, Skumul. Bawa, who described as remarkable the role of the media in projecting the work of the EFCC in the past 19 years, also sought for greater collaboration and better information sharing between the media and the Commission. Bawa used the opportunity to express the progress being recorded by the Commission in the area of conviction, saying the Commission secured 2,701 convictions as at October 7, 2022, in addition to recovering assets running into billions of Naira. He, however, said the Commission was not resting on its oars in spite of the conviction record secured so far within the year. According to him, the EFCC believes that more needs to be done to deter citizens from getting involved in financial crimes and discouraging the theft of public resources, adding that it is believed that some of these crimes could be prevented if the members of the public have the right information. Hence, the reason the Commission is intensifying public enlightenment engagement and hopefully in a few weeks' time, the EFCC will formally launch its radio station. The EFCC chair, who had joined the program, virtually restated the determination of the Commission to tackle financial crimes in the nation's electoral process. He said the recent arraignment of persons arrested for inducing voters during the Ocean governorship election should send a message to those bent on corrupting the electoral process that the consequences will be dire. I thank all of you for all the support, for all the understanding, and for all the encouragement for us to do what we have to do. We have said it time and time again uh, that um, the fight against international and financial crimes in our dear country, Nigeria, is not for the EFCC or any other related agency for that matter. It's for all Nigerians to key in to it. Because I do not believe that um, with little uh, economic and financial crimes, of course, corruption is part of it. You know, our country is going to be better off in terms of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, truthful and visual allocation of resources, you know, for the betterment of, uh, of our citizenry. Speaking on peculiarities, trends, typologies, and challenges of cybercrime enforcement in Nigeria, head counterterrorism general investigation section CTGI EFCC headquarters Abuja, Mustafa Afiz, advised individuals and organizations to be more cautious, particularly in the face of the increasing sophistication of cyber criminals across the world. Deputy Director Head Legal and Prosecution EFCC Legal Zonal Command G.K. Latona in his paper titled Challenges of Prosecuting Economic and Financial Crimes in Nigeria described corruption as a species of a larger economic and financial crimes. He decried the adverse impact of financial crimes on Nigeria, saying it causes the plundering of public resources under development of the country, capital flight and illicit financial flow, international contempt, absence of foreign investors, unemployment and manipulation of the political process. Also, in a paper titled Best Practices in Financial Crimes Reporting, A View from the Inside, Assistant Director, Media and Publicity Unit EFCC, Dele Oyewale, lamented what he described as unreporting 
under reporting of financial crimes and non follow up of existing financial crime cases in court. Oyewole noted that economic and financial crimes across the world were evolving with worrying dynamics and called on the media to attune itself to the rising strides and trends of criminality. Professionalism being one of the topmost quality of being an EFCC officer creates the need for the EFCC to train and retrain its staff to the best international practice. As in this next report, where 197 drivers of the EFCC completed their three month training program at the Nigerian Army School of Supply and Transport, Benin City, Edo State, and are ready to contribute their quota in the fight against economic and financial crimes. Here are details of this. A total of 197 drivers of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC completed their three-month training program at the Nigerian Army School of Supply and Transport, Benin City, Edo State. Speaking at the passing out ceremony which took place at the Muhammad Buhari Auditorium of the Nigerian Army School of Supply and Transport, the EFCC Chairman Abdul Rashid Bawa commended the Nigerian Army for allowing the Commission to use their facilities to train the drivers. He noted that the training was meant to address the operational gaps in the Commission, urging the trainees to see their appointments as an opportunity to serve their fatherland and contribute their quota to the growth of the Commission. Uh, it has never been done before in the years. So you rely uh, mostly from uh, you know, uh, seconded drivers from the Nigeria police and it's part of the independent uh, uh, drive that the management of the EFCC is uh, championing uh, you know, currently. Uh, so we came here to the best uh, institution that uh, is known historically for training of uh, uh, you know, you know, drivers for the training and uh, graciously the leadership of uh, the Nigerian Army Acting Commandant Nigerian Army School of Supply and Transport Brigadier General U.T. Otaru in his remarks noted that the training has improved the skills and professionalism of the trainees to effectively function in the law enforcement environment. The training, the first of its kind in the history of the commission, commenced on July 25, 2022 and featured both theory and practical exercises. The three trainees that distinguished themselves during the program, Omaji Adejo Friday, Ogbu Philemon Chigozi and Adekule Adewale Bolahan, who emerged first, second and third, respectively, were recognized. The passing out ceremony was witnessed by top management of the commission, senior military officers and family and members of the trainees. Abbas Abubakar Umar reporting for the Eagle. Forex malpractice is made possible by a network of collaboration and it usually takes the concept of an entire institution to hatch, even though not everyone in the institution may have been involved at the initial plot. Forex malpractice includes any act with fraudulent intent of omission, commission, falsification, collaboration in the application for, utilization, exportation, importation, declaration, or documentation relating to the use of foreign exchange in the market, negating the letter of spirit of subsisting and applicable status and regulations. Ojo Chokutame Eche and our guest will be educating us on foreign exchange malpractice, Oko for sanity. Thank you very much, Aisha. And I want to say a very big thank you for joining us on this segment of the program. My name is Oja Chukutami Eche, and I'm here with the head foreign exchange malpractices section of the EFCC, assistant commander of the EFCC, ACE Hawa Ringim. ACE Ringim, thank you so much for coming on the program. My pleasure. The foreign exchange malpractices section of the EFCC, FEMS for short, is a very, very important section of the commission. So I wanted to just let us in on the background of the commission, I mean, um, of the section. How did it come to be? What is the responsibility of FEMS? The foreign exchange malpractice section of the EFCC 
was um, established sometime in 2016 in addition to the existing operational section of the commission. The section is charged with responsibility of um, investigating individuals and corporate body who illegally or fraudulently engage in forex transaction. Example, maybe a forex dealer who is not licensed with the Central Bank of Nigeria, then a licensed corporate body who receives um, this forex from the Central Bank of Nigeria at an official rate but um, sell it to the general public at the unofficial rate. The session is also charged with the responsibility of um, investigating and prosecuting all forex fraud cases reported to the commission by either individual or corporate body. Okay, um, let's dig a little deeper into the foreign exchange market in relation to fraud. Um, what types of offenses do criminals perpetrate in the foreign exchange markets? Okay, there are a lot. There are a lot, really. But I, would have, I want to look at a um, few of them, which include economic sabotage, money laundering, obtaining by false returns, and diversion of funds. Let's look at um, economic sabotage. You know, the, the fraudulent and unlawful activities of these um, forest racketeers leads to the devaluation or weakening of our currency, which is the Naira. And this Naira is the major determinant of the national economy. So, um, when anybody that does that have at least committed an offense of economic sabotage. Money laundering, you say the Money Laundering um, Prevention and uh, Prohibition Act 2022, part 2, sub 2, 1, clearly states that no individual or corporate body shall, except in a transaction through the financial institution, make a cash um, transaction in excess of 5 million naira for individual or 10 million, 10 million naira in the case of um, a corporate body. And when it comes to foreign exchange um, offenses, when an individual makes a deposit above that threshold, then in turn receive forex in Naira, he has committed an offense of money laundering. The foreign exchange uh, manifestation also investigate cases of um, obtaining money by false presence. There are instances where individual collects a Naira in exchange of forex, knowing fully well that they don't have that forex. And in some instances, some individual collect forex in exchange of Naira, when knowing fully well that they don't have um, the capacity to give other Naira or the forex. So in such situations, the person has committed an offense of obtaining by false uh, pretense. I want, to know, I want us to look at the economy. How do these frauds in the foreign exchange market affect the economy of Nigeria? Okay, these offenses uh, greatly affect our economy. Example, depreciation of the Naira. The policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria, which allows individuals to source for forex, to pay for product or foreign services, put excess demand on this forex, thereby weakening the Naira against the dollar. We have the increase in the cost of, um, of um, goods and services. When the strength of this Naira is weakened, or the value, more Naira will be required for, to, for, uh, to purchase goods and, 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 and services, whereby leads to inflation. And the, the, the economic sabotage being carried out by these market um, racketeers leads to the disparity, is responsible for this disparity between the official exchange rate of the dollar against um, 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 the Naira. It reduces foreign direct investment. When the scarcity of forex in any economy leads to high cost of setting up business and this scares away investors, which leads to underdevelopment and unemployment. I would like us to look at EFCC's role in the fight against um, malpractices, foreign exchange malpractices in Nigeria. You are in charge. How do you do it? What is the role of the Commission in all of this? Okay, the, the Economic and Financial Crimes Council, that is the EFCC, fights against um, foreign exchange malpractice dates back from the inception of the Commission, but it gathers more momentum when a special unit, that is the Foreign Exchange Malpractice Unit, was created sometimes in um, 2006. The Commission's efforts towards this fight against um, foreign exchange malpractices is geared towards ensuring the stability of our currency. That is prevention of illegal selling of um, buying and selling of forex, which the, which the commission does through um, routine checks at the period of change um, um, market operations. We do constant um, routine checks 
on the bureau to change um, operations. Then prevention of unauthorized dealers in the forex market. The, we, we try to ensure that all forex dealers are registered with the Central Bank of Nigeria to carry out these forex businesses. Then compliance with the extant rules to ensure strict adherence of the Central Bank of Nigeria foreign exchange man practice guidelines that is including the, both the forex dealers and the um, commercial banks. And the Commission also does public enlightenment, that is to enlighten the general public on what constitutes foreign exchange man practices and the implication of um, committing um, such an offence. For example, the commercial bank, when it comes to the distribution of PTA and BTA, PTA is personal travel allowance and um, basic travel allowance. Well, um, you'd agree with me that every good venture has its own challenges. So tell us, AC Iringim, um, I would like you to let us in on the many challenges that you face in the course of doing your duties when you go out there to fight this crime in the foreign exchange market. What do you see? Definitely, as you said, um, no good ventures um, um, carry out its uh, activities effectively without having some challenges. Some of the challenges being faced when um, investigating these um, um, foreign exchange man practices include a lack of adequate um, cooperation between the major players in the forex market, that is the forex dealers and the commercial banks. We have a lack of transparency on the part of the commercial banks when it comes to the proper distribution of this allocated forex, especially when it comes to this PTA and BTA, because there is a lot of fraud going on to, in, in the allocation of this PTA and BTA by the commercial banks. Then we have the inadequate synergy between other law enforcement agencies when it comes to identifying and arresting of foreign exchange regulators. You talked about synergy. I'd like to take you up on that. I know that FEMS synergizes with other departments, other agencies, other corporate bodies to fight crime in the foreign exchange market. So tell us, what are the names or, you know, the status of these um, organizations that you, you know, collaborate with? Some of the agencies, as the Commission collaborate with, in ensuring successful implementation on the discharge of his uh, operation are uh, enormous. But majorly, we have the Central Bank of Nigeria. The Central Bank of Nigeria furnished the Commission with details of all forest allocation and guidelines of distribution to the commercial bank. The commercial bank will make sure that there is transparency in, uh, um, in the distribution of those allocated forex and to ensure that those CBN guidelines on the distribution are properly followed and this commercial bank are also expected to inform the, the Commission on the distribution of, of funds across the country. That sometimes they do transport cash between one state to the other. So they are expected to notify um, the, the Commission on those movement of cash which actually they've been doing. Then the Nigeria Airport Authority, we have a very good cordial relationship with the uh, Airport Authority as it is now. We have our staffs in all the international airports in Nigeria who work hand in hand with this um, Federal Airport Authority staffs, especially the AFSEC security when it comes to the manning of the scanner. That is um, to be able to identify any traveler who concealed um, huge sums of cash or valuable examples, maybe gold, diamond, etc. Then we have a very cordial relationship with also the Association of the Bureau of Change Operators. We liaise with this um, 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 app called as the Association of Bureau of Change Operators when it comes to sensitization and regular checks on their dealing with the general public when it comes to buying and selling of forex. Then the Nigerian Customs Services. We also work closely with the Nigerian Customs Services, especially the declaration decks when it comes to um, the declaration of um, funds by travelers. AC Iringim, as a way of um, campaigning against foreign exchange malpractices, I know that FEMS, the section which you heard, heard, is embarking on extensive display of banners and information, education and communication materials, that's IEC materials, especially at the Nigerian airports. I would like you to tell us a bit about this campaign. What do you hope to achieve? What is the, going to be the aim of this campaign? This campaign against the foreign exchange man practice across all the major airports in the country 
is to sensitize the general public on what actually constitutes foreign exchange man practices and the consequences and implication of engaging in such. Then the banners is the banners is also sensitize the general public and the international airport users on the amount expected to be declared. That is the threshold that a traveler is expected to declare when coming into the country or going out of the country. As, um, as stated in um, the Money Laundering Prohibition Act, that is part 2, sub 3, section 3. Okay, so ACE, Hawaiian game, what are your final words as we round off this segment of the program? Yes, my, my final word to general public is that crime and criminality doesn't pay. We are all Nigerians, we can see the situation of the economy and this um, state of the economy is all caused by this um, market uh, racketeers who manipulate the markets and, um, and um, at the detriment of the national economy. And EFCC will not relent in its effort to go after all these um, um, economic saboteurs. And we also call on the general public to join hands with the AFCC and be able to identify and report any person or corporate body um, seen trying to commit any form of economic and financial crime in Nigeria so as to save the uh, Nigeria as a whole. Okay, so thank you so much. We all have to join hands together to fight economic and financial crimes. Thank you so much, ACE Hawaringim, for coming on the program. My pleasure. Okay, and that's it from this segment of the program. We've been speaking with the head foreign exchange malpractices section of the EFCC, ACE Hawa Ringin. I hope you got a thing or two there. My name is Ojo Chukutami Eche. Let's join hands together and fight economic and financial crimes together. Aisha takes over now. And that's it on this week's episode of The Eagle. Don't forget that you can send an email to info at efcc.gov.ng and speak to our officers or representatives on 0809-3322644 and follow us on all our social media platforms at Official EFCC for all matters relating to economic and financial crimes. Use the EFCC mobile app, The Eagle Eye, to report any fraud you see happening around you. You download the app, you follow the steps and report fraud on the go. And you can also take pictures of corrupt practices and upload them. I am Aisha Mohammed, leaving you with this parting words from an American professional baseball player, George Herman Ruth. He said, and I quote, The way a team plays as a whole determines its success. You may have the greatest bunch of individual stars in the world, but if they don't play together, the club wouldn't be worth a dime. Let's all join hands to see economic and financial crimes brought to its barest minimum. The fight is for us all, so play your part while we do ours. Let's stand for integrity. Let's do the right thing always. Goodbye. God bless Nigeria. Please do stay safe. Be kind to yourself and to others and do enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you.